All right, so let's just go through this again step by step. First one, vertical asymptotes. All you guys have to do is set your denominator equal to 0, right? Very good. Subtract 3, subtract 3. x equals negative 3. So I immediately plot my x in or asymptote. OK? Everybody follow me? OK. Step number two, horizontal asymptote. All you need to do for horizontal asymptote is compare the degrees in the, in the numerator and denominator. I notice in this case, the degree in my numerator is larger than the degree in my denominator. Based on the horizontal line test, we know that that does not have a horizontal asymptote. Okay. However, so if we do not have a horizontal asymptote, we want to check for a slant or an oblique asymptote. So to do that, we simply take our denominator and we use and we do um, division into our numerator. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our denominator is what? Is that a linear? Is that a linear? Is that linear? Yes. X is to the first power. Guys, excuse me. If you're doing division with linear, what's the best way to do? Synthetic division. I have so many of you guys struggling. Yes, guess what? On your quiz, you have to do a problem on long division. Guess what? On your test, you have to do a problem using long division. But guess what? Those problems I give to you are more like x squared and x cubed. So you have to use long division. But if you guys have a linear as your divisor, just do synthetic division, right? I mean, I, I'm going to go do it long division because I see some students are making some mistakes and you need to know long division. But the best thing to do is just to use synthetic division whenever possible. x divides into x squared x times. Multiply x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. Remember, you're subtracting the whole row. So you can distribute and make that a positive. Or you can say x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative 3x minus 3x is a negative 6x. x divides into negative 6x, negative 6 times. Negative 6 times x is a negative 6x. Negative 6 times 3 is going to be a negative 18. You have a remainder, but we don't care about remainders. My slant asymptote is y equals x minus 6. Okay? The remainder is not going to affect my asymptote. How do you graph this? That's your y-intercept. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. My slope is 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1. Well, it's going to look something like that. Right? OK. The next thing, determine your x and your y intercepts. So step number four, my x-intercept, again, is when y is equal to 0. So I, huh? Um, do you want the technical definition or just the basic definition? OK. <laughs> I'm not sure if it'll make sense or not. Probably not without the technical. But you, it, the remainder does not affect the asymptote. In a small regard, if you guys remember, if you were looking at the asymptote, the, as, or the remainder is negative 18, negative 18 over x plus 3. Okay. What I want you to understand, as x gets bigger and bigger, what does this number do? Does this number get bigger and bigger, or does it get smaller and smaller? What happens? It gets smaller and smaller. And eventually, what, what happens when like x is like 1 million? This gets so small, it's almost what? Not exactly. It almost goes to 0, right? So your remainder approaches 0. So it actually doesn't affect the line at all, OK? So we just leave it out. Oh, so I'm not, oh, did you? OK. So to solve this again, because a lot of students are having trouble with this. To solve this, we'll just multiply by our denominator to get that off of there. So I'll multiply by x plus 3 on both sides. Please stop that scratching, please. So those divide out. And you're left with 0 equals x squared minus 3x minus 7. Is that factorable? No, it's not. But can we still find what the x-intercepts are by using a different technique? 
that? Yeah, of course we can. We can use like um, quadratic formula. So, shh, we're spending way too much time. I want to finish this. So I make sure it's set equal to 0. I have opposite 3 plus or minus b squared, negative 3 squared minus 4 times a times c, divide by 2 times a. Let's get, say it's going to be 9. Um, wait, is it? Oh, it's 9, 36. Oh, yeah, it's going to be fractional. No, it's the opposite of B. Opposite. OK, so if it's negative, it's positive. If it's positive, it's negative. Um, shh, let me get through this. So I have negative 9, or I have positive 9. And then it's going to be plus 28. So 9 plus 28 is going to give me 37, right? And then 2 times a, which is 1. So I have x equals 3 halves plus or minus, or uh, let's just do this, 3. Uh, let's just leave it like that. So we can figure out what those two numbers are. If you guys have a calculator, you can simply tuck those in. You wouldn't really need to unless they're basically asking you guys to do this. Um, but you could do square root of 37 plus 3 divided by 2, 4.54. So 1, 2, 3. Yep. And make it in a 0. 0.041. Yep. I'm getting negative 1.54. 3 minus the square root of 37 divided by 2 is negative 1.54. Huh? No, you have two y-intercepts. Yeah. You do 3 plus the square root of 37 divided by 2. You do 3 minus the square root of 37 divided by 2. OK? Huh? Um, well, if you're having two, then that means the divisor here is producing two different lines. Now, is it possible for the quotient to be not a line? Yeah, you could divide and have a quotient be a parabola. So therefore, your asymptote could be the shape of a parabola. We're not going to do problems like that. But when you do division, if it's going to have two different asymptotes, then it's going to be approaching it from two different things from here. Um, so we're not done yet. The next one is now we need to figure out what the y-intercept is, right? Yeah. So f of x, I'm kind of having a little bit of too much conversation, especially when I'm going over this. Y-intercept, x equals 0. So I have f of x equals 0 squared minus 3 times 0 minus 7 divided by 0 plus 3 equals 7 thirds. Negative. Negative 7 thirds, thank you. So that's going to be at negative 2 and 1 third. Yep. So if you guys were to kind of connect these points, connect the dots. if you guys were going to think about this, if you want to just connect the points, we know the graph has to approach the asymptote, right? It has to approach the asymptote. So from here, it's probably going to go something like this. And then here, it's going to look like that. OK? Now, if we go ahead and look at the other side, you guys could always, first of all, we could check symmetry. I'm just going to do this in my head. If I plug in f of negative x, f of negative x simplified gives me x squared plus 3x minus 7 minus x plus 3. I plugged it in, and I simplified, simplified it. Is it the same equation? No. Is it the same equation with the opposite signs, Romano? That's what I should be looking up here. No. So there's no symmetry. Yeah. Um, so now I could go ahead and plug in these points, or you could look at your table. Ah. Ooh, it's okay. Graceful. Your graph. I caught it with my foot. 
great. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> I just oh, you got it?